Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and even good night to all of you who are attending this symposium dedicated to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. My name is Luc Allemand, I'm French, I'm speaking from Paris, and I am the Secretary General of the Steering Committee for the Proclamation of an International Year of Basic Sciences for Sustainable Development in 2022. It is my pleasure to open this symposium telling you about this international year that I will often mention through its nickname, IYBSSD 2022. To begin with, I propose that we pay a tribute to the memory of some people. Without their work, we wouldn't be able to attend this meeting. I don't want to get into a historical dispute about who was the first to produce the law of refraction of light. I am not an historian of science and my homage will forget many scholars, but I propose that at least we remind that Villebrot Snell, René Descartes and Thomas Harriot worked to understand how light band when it strikes the interface between two media with different indexes. Then we should remind also of Jean-Daniel Colladon Jacques Babinet and John Tyndall, who demonstrated how it was possible to guide light in a curved flow of water. All these men would certainly have been very surprised to learn that their research, motivated by their curiosity about how nature works and how light behaves, would pave the way for the development of optical fibers. Optical fibers that are at the base of today high speed broadband telecommunications. Of course, talking only about infrastructures, there have been on many other contributions from chemists, physicists, mathematicians, or scientists who, for instance, studied the properties of different kinds of glass, uh, discovered the laser effect, calculated the multiplexing, cartographed the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. Without this letter work mostly done to, to better understand our planet, the cable through which this video recorded talk went from Paris, where I live, to Canada, where it is now broadcasted, would probably not be there. We must also thank some other people, um, among, among which the most famous are Tim Berners-Lee and Robert Caillot. Uh, who together and with some colleagues developed the World Wide Web at CERN at the turn of the 1990s. And their first aim to develop this World Wide Web was to improve sharing high energy physics experiences data between physicists worldwide. Uh, they themselves rapidly saw the potential for society of the work they had done primarily to serve basic sciences. Uh, the story goes that the first digital picture sent through the web by Berners-Lee himself is this one. Uh, Les Horribles Cernet, uh, LHC, was an amateur musical band uh, whose musicians were apart from the staff at CERN. The point I want to make with this long introduction is that I can't talk to you today and this whole meeting can happen only because many scholars in a more or less remote past driven by their curiosity to understand how nature behave, worked on topics that could have appeared to have no direct utility to other people of the time. So some would have said they, they, they were wasting their time, but we, we now know they were not. And uh, well, I just cherry picked some examples uh, I could easily find uh, on the internet. Uh, it is, of course, a problem that all the names I mentioned, and I, I, I will mention some others, uh, were from European white men. I, I will come back later on this. I hope you will uh, excuse this lack of diversity. Of course, the, the ultimate reason why we are attending an online conference is the COVID-19 pandemic. This pandemic already took and will certainly continue to take a harsh tribute to humanity with dead people, disabled people, and more poverty for so many others. In this very sad context, however, we must think about where we would be without the accumulation of knowledge 
uh, from basic science studies in the past. Again, I, I will only select uh, a few examples uh, very partially. Uh, I will rely for this on the document we produced with scientists from the International Union of Biological Sciences. So genetic sequence of the SRAS-CoV-2 virus has been known just weeks after it has been identified. And nowadays we can follow precisely the emergence of new variants thanks to the pioneering works by in independent teams led by uh, Walter Gilbert and Frederick Sanger in the 1970s. Polymerase chain reaction details are probably not known from the general public, but, uh, and you can try this, uh, ask all your friends and neighbors, uh, they most certainly know about PCR tests by now. Uh, this test originates in the very basic work of Kerry B. Malice in the early 1980s. When I've been here with COVID-19 last October, my physician told me to take a cortisone-based drug that helped me to recover. So thank you to Philip Showalter and Sean, all biologists and physicians who discovered cortisone, corticosteroids medications, and developed their use in medicine. And uh, I hope to be able to meet some of you in real life in two years during the next IUPAC Congress, wherever it will be. By then, we will certainly be all vaccinated. I personally got two injections of a messenger RNA-based vaccine in the past months. I'm not sure that uh, François Jacob, uh, Sidney Brenner, and Matthew Meselson and all their colleagues thought about the use of messenger RNA for a vaccine when they discovered it in the early 1960s. But uh, what I am sure about is that no such vaccine would have been produced so rapidly in, uh, in less than a year without a host of basic science research in the past 60 years. I could spend my whole talk uh, going on with such examples, but uh, as I said already, I am not a science historian. I would certainly make a lot of mistakes. Uh, you could do your own list from your own experience. And perhaps we will have some help from historians of science to tell the real stories without forgetting anyone, especially the contribution from women scientists and from scientists from the global south. But at least I hope that at this point of my talk, you are now convinced that basic sciences are crucial for a better life. A better life uh, in the international language uh, is a global concept and it goes by the name of Agenda 2030. Uh, this agenda with its 17 sustainable development goals and its 169 targets has been adopted in 2015 by the General Assembly of the United Nations. Well, at this point, if we were in a leaf session, uh, I would ask you to make together the list of the 17 SDGs. Um, it is worth taking time to mention every one of them as they are equally important. So let's go one after the other. So first, no poverty. Two, zero hunger. Three, good health and well-being. Four, quality education. Five, gender equality. Six, clean water and sanitation. Seven, affordable and clean energy. Eight, decent work and economic growth. Nine, industry, innovation, and infrastructure. 10, reduced inequalities. 11, sustainable cities and communities. 12, responsible consumption and production. 13, climate action. 14, life below water. 15, life on land. 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions. And 17, partnerships for the goals. 
Well, all, all these titles are, are very summarized and uh, I encourage you all to, to read the very well produced pages on the UN website at this address uh, to know more ab about each of them. And also you will be able to, to read about the 169 targets and I, I will pair you the, the, the list uh, just now. It is worth also to underline two, two important principles of Agenda 2030. First, sustainable development goals must matter to everyone on the planet. And uh, here I, I, I will quote uh, Gro Harlem Brundtland, uh, who was the former Prime Minister of Norway, former Director General of the World Health Organization. And, uh, uh, and undisputed uh, authority in matter of uh, sustainable development. And she, she wrote in, in the prologue of the 2019 Global Sustainable Development Report that unlike the Millennium Development Goals, they, the SDGs, apply to all countries and not just the developing world. That is important. Every head of state, every government and every citizen as a responsibility to ensure that the sustainable development goals are met. Every country, every region, every city, etc., must examine its development trajectory and put it in track towards the SDGs. As there are still differences between parts of the world, countries we used to call developed must also help less advanced ones for more and historical reasons, of course, but also, and let me be a bit cynical here, uh, for very practical reasons. No part of the planet can be safe if the whole planet is not. We, we began to learn this with climate change. Uh, there is only one atmosphere for all and uh, uh, carbon dioxide emission in one point of the globe has an impact everywhere else. Uh, we are currently learning this with the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, even if some part of the globe, uh, in some part of the globe, people are, are have a very high rate of vaccination, it, it won't be enough. Uh, so if the virus can circulate because people are not vaccinated in, in part of, of the globe, the, the risk that a new variant appears that would resist to current vaccine and treatments will be very high. The second principle I want to underline about the SDGs is that there are interactions among SDGs. They cannot be treated one by one. There are synergies between them on some aspects, but there are also drawbacks. And uh, this figure from the 2019 Global Sustainable Development Report shows the co-benefits in blue and the trade-offs in orange. And, uh, and encourage uh, you to, to, to download this Global Sustainable Development Report and uh, to, to have a closer look at the, at the figure and uh, at the other parts of the report. Uh, I will just give an example. Uh, very recently, uh, a common working group of the IPCC and IPBES, so the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change on one hand, and the International Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services on the other hand. Uh, so there's the, a, common, a common group of both these organizations recently pointed out these co-benefits and these trade-offs for climate and biodiversity. Uh, so the SDG 13, climate action on one hand, and the SDGs 14 and 15, life on land and life underwater, on the other hand. Now that sustainable development is clear for everybody, you understand why basic sciences are essential to achieve this agenda. Uh, I already mentioned several examples since the beginning of this talk about how the results of scientific research can be used afterwards to take challenges that were not even imagined before. The, the, the way basic sciences are practiced should help also to reach SDGs. And just two examples, SDG 5, uh, gender equality, 
uh, the role of, of women is too often minor than uh, as we could see in the many historical example I gave, and I'm not very proud of, of that. And to mention just one figure, only 23 women have been awarded a Nobel Prize in basic sciences since uh, the creation of the prize in 1901, out of 550 laureates. Um, happily, a lot of initiatives and programs are developed in basic sciences to enhance the role of, uh, of women in science. Uh, SDG 16, peace and strong institution. So we have the historical example of CERN, that was a place where scientists from the West and from the East could meet uh, during the Cold War. And we have the current example of CISAMI, the synchrotron light of experimental science and applications in the Middle East, built in Jordan, whose funding members are countries that do not speak much directly otherwise. Uh, so the list of the founding members of, of, of CISAMI are Cyprus, Egypt, Islamic Republic of Iran, Israel, Jordan, Pakistan, Palestine, and Turkey. But of course, the promoters of the International Year of Basic Sciences for Sustainable Development think that more must be done. Again, uh, just two figures to illustrate this point. Uh, these figures are underlined by Audrey Azoulay, the Director General of UNESCO in a foreword to the 2021 UNESCO Science Report. Um, so the report finds that a minority of countries are providing the bulk of investment. Four out of five countries still devote less than 1% of GDP to research. This is a big problem. A problem for the countries that don't do enough research themselves because they will remain dependent of other parts of the world to find solutions to the challenges they meet. And they will have more difficulties to build well adapted solutions as they, they, they want to master the, the, the underlying science. But it is also a problem for the whole world because all the intelligences who live in these countries and we could contribute to the advancements of knowledge are not in the good conditions to do it. And the, the second figure is one, only one in three researchers is a woman. Whereas gender parity has nearly been achieved in the life sciences, it remains a distant goal in fields just uh, such as engineering, where only 28% of graduates are women and artificial intelligence, where only 22% of professionals are women. We really miss a lot being deprived of so many women intelligence. The tools that we have to mobilize the scientific community, police, policy makers, and the general public are international years. There have been nine scientific international years in the past 25 years under the edges of UNESCO, uh, beginning in 1998 with the International Year of the Ocean. In 2003, there was the International Year of Fresh Water. In 2005, the International Year of Physics with the Einstein Centenary. In 2008, the International Year of Planet Earth. In 2009, the International Year of Astronomy. 2011, the International Year of Chemistry. 2014, the International Year of Crystallography. 2015 was the International Year of Light and Light-Based Technologies. And I think most of you remember that uh, two years ago in 2019, we had the International Year of the Periodic Table of Chemical Elements together with the centenary of Mendeleev. In 2017, Michel Spiro, then president-elect of IUPAP, proposed that after all these field-oriented international years, 2022 should be an international year of all basic sciences for sustainable development. Uh, all basic sciences, because as we have seen, dealing with SDGs needs strong interdisciplinary research in 2022, because 2022 will be the midterm for Agenda 2030. And it will be a good time to look at what has already been done and where we must still make progress. 
The idea was immediately endorsed by several partners. And today, the steering committee of IYBSSD gets us 28 international scientific unions and scientific organizations, whose logo you can see here. So I can mention uh, IUPAP, IRD, IISA, IMA, IUPAC, of course, NUPEC, IUGG, IMU. Well, you can find the whole list on the IYBSSD website. In 2019, the General Conference of UNESCO adopted a resolution regarding the International Year of Basic Sciences for Sustainable Development. And I just quote here the final part of this resolution. Uh, so the General Conference of UNESCO invites the Director General to support all efforts leading to the United Nations General Assembly to proclaim 2022 as International Year of Basic Sciences for Sustainable Development emphasizing a broader participation of women and recommends that the United Nations General Assembly at its 75th or 76th session adopt a resolution decline 2022 as United Nations International Year of Basic Sciences for Sustainable Development. So the whole text of the resolution uh, can be uh, can be found on, on iybssd2022.org website. Uh, there has been some delays due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but the resolution is on its way. It will be proposed during the next UN General Assembly by the Republic of Honduras, supported by Socialist Republic of Vietnam and uh, many other countries. Uh, talking about support, uh, to this day, more than 70 national and international science academies, continental networks, learned societies, foundations, and other organizations such as the Interparliamentary Union and the Club of Rome proclaim their support to IYBSSD 2022. And 28 Nobel Prize laureates and field medalists agreed yet to be part of the I International Advisory Committee. Here is a tentative list of topics uh, for this international year. So basic sciences and multicultural dialogue, basic sciences, education and human development, basic sciences and women, basic sciences, innovation and economy, Basic Sciences, Health and Life Sciences, Basic Sciences and Global Challenges, Basic Sciences as a Global Public Good. Uh, all these topics uh, come from, of course, uh, previous work done by, especially by international scientific unions, uh, and alone and together uh, and under the umbrella of the International Science Council. There will be several categories of events. So at the world level, uh, an inauguration conference and a closing conference. Uh, there will be continental and regional events. Uh, and we already know that the World Academy of Art and Sciences uh, will organize a European conference on basic sciences and sustainable development in, uh, in Serbia. There will be national events organized by the uh, national uh, committee. And also some already existing recurring events will take IYBSSD into account. Uh, for instance, uh, the International Day of Light uh, or some National Science Weeks. Uh, well, a, a schedule, I, I should say a tentative schedule, because uh, the first point is still not uh, guaranteed, but well, we have rather good, uh, reasonably good hopes that uh, in October 2021, the UN General Assembly will vote the resolution about IYBSSD. And then we will be able to have the inauguration conference on 1st of July 2022 and it would be held at the UNESCO headquarters in, uh, in Paris. 
between July uh, 2022 and June 2023, IYBSSD will deploy. And in summer 2023, there will be uh, the closing conference at the uh, CERN headquarters in Geneva. What are the possible resulting actions? Well, the, the beginning of a list that is far from, uh, from definite. Um, institu institutionalized full implementation of open access publishing for all research papers connected to fundamental research. More generally promote open science in all basic sciences. Develop inclusive collaboration in basic sciences more training and education to basic sciences in developing country, well, et cetera, et cetera. All your ideas are welcome. So as we are in a chemist meeting, uh, a last point about, about chemists and chemistry, how chemists can be part. So first question that every professional chemist, and I suppose that most of you are professional chemists, should ask, is how is my research in line with SDGs? So I, I give a first definition I, I found on the IUPAC uh, website is a definition of sustainable chemistry. So sustainable chemistry is a design, manufacture and use on environmentally binning chemical products and processes that prevent pollution, reduce or eliminate the use and generation of hazardous waste and reduce risk of, to human health and the environment. You're perhaps more familiar with the green chemistry defi definitions. So that green chemistry is the invention, design and application of chemical products and processes to reduce or to eliminate the use and generation of hazardous substances. So all, 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 all these uh, come from, from this uh, page in the, on the iupac.org website. You, you, you can also engage into action uh, during IYBSSD 2022. Um, so I remind you that IUPAC has an interdivisional committee on green chemistry for sustainable development. Um, also uh, among uh, IYBSSD supporters, you, you, you perhaps saw that says, uh, there is a Green Sciences for Sustainable Development Foundation and also IYCN. Uh, you could uh, reach uh, your National Chemical Society, your National Science Academy or Young Academy and uh, discuss with them what they, they, they have already planned uh, for IYBSSD. And perhaps you can be part uh, of the creation of a national committee. Uh, one recommendation I, I would like to, 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 to make and I will end on this is that uh, IYBSSD it will be an opportunity to enhance already existing projects and initiatives to give them more visibility. So have a look at what already exists uh, that link uh, basic sciences and sustainable development where you are. And there are already many initiatives. Well, you can of course pro make new proposals and create new activities, but have a look at what already exists and uh, and takes the opportunity of IYBSSD to, to give it a, a, another dimension. Thank you for still being in front of your screen. Uh, we count on you all and uh, you can reach us at this address. So contact at IYBSSD2022.org. Uh, you can follow us directly by visiting the website uh, www iybssd2022.org and by subscribing to our social media accounts that all go by at iybssd2022. Thank you for your attention.